But let's, let's clarify something about this knee bend thing being better. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we say better, we got to be really, really careful. If you, if you have a, a, a patella that's going out towards ER, yeah. it, that's going to imply that I've got a VMO and a VM that are, that are eccentrically oriented. Okay. Very easy to bend the knee. Okay. Very easy to bend the knee. However, mm -hmm. however, not doing so with force production. Because I don't have the, I don't have control of the femur relative to the tibia in that circumstance. Right. No, I, I get that part. I, okay. I, I'm I just, not wanna, I just want to be clear that, that well, when we use when when we use terminology, when you say better, we got to be really careful about better. Because yeah. if you say that the knee is bending better. I would argue that I don't necessarily know that that would be better because it, especially if we're trying to apply force, we wouldn't want that patella going out towards left field, right? Right. We want it to go out towards ER. Right. So here's my question. So the question is, is really, I'm, if the patella has been tracking laterally, let's say for eight plus years, it's uh -huh. not magically going to start track tracking normal. Well, you know, in, it's not right. How strong your magic is, Dale. Okay. Um, no, uh, um, is there like a specific mobilization that you would do for that? Other yeah, than absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but we got to break this down a little bit. We got we have to. Okay. Have to so, okay. So let's determine a few factors. Like we mm -hmm. might a couple, but let's determine a few things. So I got I got the shape of the tibia that's going to influence whether I can capture the the knee position. So what we're trying to capture here is an early IR knee position. Okay. So we're talking about like a dis like the descent into a position first. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me to go down and pick up a deadlift, I have to I have to access early propulsion to get there to grab the bar. Is that fair? Yeah. OK, so I got to be able to bend a knee. I have to be able to do it with early IR, which means I'm going to I'm, I'm going to accumulate IR from the ground up, which means I need a tibia that can capture this this early IR position at the knee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I could have interference, interference of the shape of the tibia. So if I have too much tibia femoral ER, right? That means that the that the tibia is twisted away from midline into ER. Well, that's interference. So do I have that? So I have to address that first. Right. Now, um if if it's a if it's a bony shape change, I have strategies to to address that, right? Okay? So so that's one. Okay? Now I have muscle activity that's interfering. So if I have a vastus lateralis that is concentrically oriented, that's what's pulling the patella out towards ER in the first place. Mhm. Mm Okay, relative to like whatever the bony shapes are, right? Right. Um, in that circumstance, then I have eccentric orientation medially, which means I don't have control of the patella and I don't have the ER capacity of the distal femur, which is what I need to assume that early knee position. Okay. Yep. So I so I have and and then now think about this: if I got a bony shape change in the femur, so I have a I have a magnification of ER to IR in the femur. Then I definitely can't capture the ER position of the distal femur relative to the tibia. So, um, and I know you've seen this a gajillion times. Um, take somebody in their late forties; they've they've converted to sumo from conventional because they can no longer lift deadlift conventional. Okay, and when they when they pull the weight off the ground, it looks like their legs are bowing. Yeah. Okay, and so that's a scenario where you have a femoral shape change. You have all of this muscle orientation. So in this circumstance, in this circumstance, I have tibia femoral ER, I have distal femoral IR, and then I have the superimposition of ER from the top down that's twisting the whole limb as one. Then this is a knee that actually doesn't bend easily, mm -hmm. right? So, so we have to identify like what scenario do we have at the knee Right. And then we then we can evolve the the appropriate strategy. Right. Because the, the patella can go out in that direction. And again, like based on the sequences that we just talked about, it's like it's like we have this progressive sequence of moving away from midline into ER. We just have to identify which one we're looking at. That said, is it magically going to if you start to, and there's only so much correction we can do for some people? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you're, you know, um, <laughs> You're not a 13 year old girl, right? So your yeah. constraints, 
Well, your constraints are just a little like number one, they're trained to be stiffer. You have, mm -hmm. you have adaptations that are accumulation of, you know, 50 years of, of under load experience. So those are going to, I mean, you have some relatively permanent shape changes. You have some 52. Oh, well, but you have, you have, you have like you have bony adaptations, right. That yeah. most people wouldn't have had they not had your, the loading experiences that you've had, right? Like the amount of density that you have at the ends of your bones is much greater than just about anybody, honestly, because you're probably in like the 1%, like considering considering the force output that you've you've been able to produce, you're probably in the 1% in the world. Like if we looked at the world, like you're in the 1% range, I'm sure, right? Like if you if you can, if what, what was your heaviest pull? Seven? 699. 699. Couldn't, couldn't put the one kilogram, couldn't put the one kilogram weight on to break seven. Way to go. Yeah. I I tried. Um my third attempts were usually at that point uh -huh. seven eleven or seven twenty two, yeah. whatever I yeah. needed to That's pretty awesome. Place. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you know, to 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 make that kind of a pull, it's like the amount of density that you have to have acquired, right? So you didn't explode when it happened. Right, is a lot different than than most people, and so again, we expect your constraints to be a little bit different, um, maybe less changeable, maybe takes a little bit longer for you because of the the trained behaviors, like the learned behaviors that you have that coordinate your body to do the things that you do. They're not they're not simple and easy to overcome. In some circumstances, you might get like great quick changes, but in other circumstances, it's going to take a long time. You know, mm -hmm. that's okay. Everybody's a little bit different.